rapid fire kinda... totally ridiculous questions? No, they're not. They're not ridiculous. We could Should we do it, it back to back? <laughs> CEO from Robo Creative. And I'm Ryan Moore from Robo Creative. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm Joe Zangrilli from Robo Creative. I'm also Ryan. <laughs> we are collectively I'm Ryan all too. Ryan. <laughs> we are Ryan. <laughs> we are all Ryan. How have you guys had success finding new customers this year? I think honestly, just being in the industry for a while, people are starting to see kind of what the you know where we're either going or trying to take things and so it's just kind of a more natural progression I'd say instead of like hard sell trying to attack people attack people yeah it's never really been our thing it's I think last year we just sort of made our way into nice relationships with the perfect people to align with and just sort of kept it real small and tight knit and just tried to just actually partner with people that we felt really represented what we were all about how are you guys thinking about like retaining your customers and differentiating differentiating yourself? Because it's something that I've noticed is like a real strong point of what you do. <laughs> well, honestly, so we get people every once in a while that'll do the you know I had this quoted someplace else, and what I always first think is this isn't a race to the bottom. What we need to do is we can still be in the same range, but let's pitch to them what they actually want. Because I do find that, you know, when people find out what something costs, they don't even bother asking for it. They just think it's expensive. But we want to actually give our customers, you know, exactly what they want, you know, in you know, playing the long play. Right. When we get the people who come up with the, uh, you know, the quotes and stuff, we say, here's how we could do it our way. If you want to, you know, work uh, and be able to really craft what you really want. And they actually appreciate the relationship more than the you know I'll take your last one and take a penny off it that's not the lane we want to be in I think mostly just like trying to figure out who the right customer is and the right partner I mean that's been a big thing for the last two years of, of us not filtering through and getting rid of but also just figuring out if this can be beneficial kind of on both sides as opposed to just you know, kind of losing your ass on the back end of everything just because you're casting such a wide net out there. Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of different people this year. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, really Answer good. number three. No, like We're all answer. sick of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> um, what do you wish you'd known when you'd started? <laughs> I think it's mostly, a, for me, it, like if somebody would have been able to say, focus internally, like everything that we've been, like you're just running head, head first into the fire and worrying about, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta get these out there too, but there's so much, or there's so many things that happen so fast that I think there's a lot of things that you overlook that might be deemed less important, or we'll get to that later, we'll get that to later. And a lot of things that are really crucial, whether that's from like internal or employees that are like, hey, we, sh we should put focus on this because there are things that, that matter, but you're just focused on, all right, let's get this order out to those people there. And so you're customer focused, but I think it has to be really like internally focused. So I wish someone would have said, do that 13 years ago, that now we're <laughs> not picking up the pieces of that, but like trying to focus on that a lot more. See, I wish someone told me how much work was really involved not in that it would like deter me from going into this, but I would have been doing a lot more work up front and forward thinking instead of just putting out fire minute to minute. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, <laughs> yeah, like for sure, lay the groundwork uh, yes. like in advance as opposed to just, oh, this will be cool. Cause yeah. No one expects like to scale. I mean, or you can expect to scale, but like to get to that point, I think that's like, that's something interesting if you would have been able to be able to foreshadow that, but we can do that. Right. Okay. Um, what's your favorite piece of equipment in your shop right now? I have a pretty amazing Bluetooth speaker, <laughs> to be completely honest, that is in my office that is like 30 bucks from Amazon, and the, the subs on it are, and the clarity are pretty amazing. So that makes a lot of wonders happen. <laughs> 
at least for me. We'll drop a link to that in the bio. <laughs> Don't <will>. worry. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hmm, my favorite piece of equipment. I bought one for my house, actually, too. So <laughs> that's how much I like it. Ooh, I know what my favorite piece of uh, equipment is. The iImage DTS. <laughs> the game changer. The one that when someone says, you know those nine screens that you just made, they're all wrong. It's not panic, it's all right. I'll be back in 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, that's the best. What's and our new digital squeegee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge this year for, for your business? What are, you, what are you anticipating? I mean, 2019 was for sure full focus, like internally. Um, and everybody knew that inside and out of the company. Um, for us, I think 2020 is still the same thing, but also focusing more on like not just the wide expansive growth again like the big net of trying to just grab sales but also just focusing still internally and specific specific sales i think that are going to be intelligent for the sake of the health of the company but also for everyone's mentality i think trying to focus on menta mental health for everybody just internally and externally just for us 100 percent. I, I mean for us we are lucky enough to have a team that wants to work as hard as we do, but it's different for, I mean, we built our prison, but we see that our employees want to be so involved that, you know, when they see me staying late, they want to get in and, you know, just the team, it's all about the team. But we also understand that you don't have to be chained to this place like we do and to actually take care of your mental health because how many years, 13 years? I think anyone who's a printer knows exactly where I am right now. <laughs> right. Trying to make it better for the upcoming crew. What are you most excited about in the industry right now? So, I mean, going back to our new digital squeegee. Yes. <laughs> um, I think the, uh, like the concept of hybrid printing um, is something kind of interesting and also wild. So when it got launched, um, initially, I think we were just kind of really torn from the idea of like, are you losing something with the tradition of screen printing and are you losing something with, you know, the mastery that goes into it? But I think that there's just for, I think a company like us and just a facility that we can really try to, we're constantly trying to push things like to the next level and outside of the normal box. It opens up a whole new world for us to be able to do that. But I think that trying to watch the industry and how they're going to like, digest all of that is is I think interesting and you know there's not significant changes that come along in this industry like that that really kind of shake things up so you know for us 13 years into it to be able to see something that is like that's pretty revolutionary to the industry and oh, also man. just for printers in general so like seeing a change like that that shows that this industry is still really progressing and, and trying to change is I think is a really cool thing it's also a company in your backyard right which yes. is incredible yeah and we've I mean you know we've worked I mean, we work constantly with them back and forth, mm -hmm. and you know they see us as you know not a crucial, crucial part of the industry, but an integral part of the next steps of this industry. And so, being able to like volley off of each other of like, will this be beneficial? Do you see you know impact from this? So, I think that's cool for us just to be in, involved in that and have an opinion on where well, kind man. of the industry is moving. When being an early adopter and with them being in our backyard, being able to bounce off ideas or figure out like hidden ways to use this with that it was something they never planned. I can't wait to see what we could do with that thing. When's it come in? I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Might already be there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Is there anything that like scares you or keeps you up at night about the industry or, or your or your business, either one? I think every single person who keeps dropping their pants in price, that kills everybody. <laughs> I was wondering and where you're going with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mainly everybody's pants I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's a concern because it's always people out there. If you're driving the whole industry into the ground in pricing, then it's going to hurt everybody consistently for like the long play because everybody gets used to that. But I think that's where, you know, two, three years ago, we kind of made a stance on that of like, then we don't need to be there. We're not going to play that. Mm -hmm. We're not going to play that game. And I think if, you know, for us that we know what we do, we know what we do really well. You can't steal that, you can't take yeah. that away. If you create that sort of atmosphere and that sort of like ecosystem, like there's nothing that can be stolen there. Right. So am I worried about that somewhat? You know, I guess the bigger like, you know, ecological business systems that are out there, steal, you know, and, and tariffs and that whole thing. I mean, I think that's always concern, but I think the industry is in a really good place. I mean, it's growing and it's doing oh, really yeah. well yeah, yeah. and it's been consistently there. 
I mean, we made it when we first started. We made it through the recession, and yeah. we were doing well then. So hopefully everybody's been on a, a good path. And if we've figured it out now, at least we've figured it out enough to lie to everybody now. <laughs> <laughs> Embellish. Right. Embellishment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you or are you planning to address, like, higher labor costs and the sort of, like, 3% unemployment, like, labor shortage? <clears throat> For us, we understand that... Our team are actual humans. <laughs> Everyone is, you know, should be able to live a amazing life if they're able to come and work for us full time and be part of our team. So for us, it's more about just keeping everyone happy. I mean, we are not tripping out about that stuff because it's the right thing to do is to take care of people and be legal. <laughs> I think our, our responsibility is a little bit different and we looked, yeah. you know, three, four years ago when we relocated to our facility, a big thing was taking that into consideration. We, you know, grew almost five or six times the size of what we were and so when we were looking at different locations and facilities, we could go, you know, super far south, super far north, super far west, but we were going to lose who we were and yep. a lot of those things, you know, you see these big, big businesses and it, it, it makes sense in terms of like your bottom line and financially for a business, but you're also, you're killing that ecosystem. So you're going to lose a lot of those people just because you're moving somewhere for tax incentives and you're, you're getting cheaper rent. That's, mm -hmm. there's for sure a, a way to think about that and not that it's a wrong way, but I think for us, like we get it, it's a huge impact mm -hmm. and it, it's something that we stay conscious of too. But I think that that's also our, like we make that choice. Yeah. We're going to stay here. We're dealing with higher labor costs. That's fine. But it's just our responsibility to keep stepping it up and do better as opposed to just shutting down and saying we're going to go into Timbuktu because it's going to be really cheap and we get cheap labor. I mean, you, you get what you pay for. it. 100%. I mean, people tell me what their minimum wage is and yes, my eyes pop out of my head, but that's over there. We're over here. It's just a different game. Yeah. What's the hardest part of running a screen printing business? <laughs> Or uh, just robot in general, I guess. Uh, <laughs> taking care of your body and mind. <laughs> Again, the mental health. Yes, 1,000%. Yeah, sure. I think any business is the same. You know, you go into it and you're focused, again, just on so many fires, putting out those immediate fires. But how do you create that platform to be successful as a business, to be successful like with a bigger picture and a bigger message, but also focusing on how you do take care of people and having that, that understanding that you know, certain things aren't going to work out. People are going to come and go and not, you know, early, early on, we were still kind of impacted by that just as normal people. Like we get that, that hurts. It feels like, what are we not doing that is good enough to be able to retain you? Is it something mm -hmm. we're doing wrong as a business, as people, or is it just the natural, we know it's the natural tendency of, you know, certain things in terms of business. But um, I think for us, it's just like creating an atmosphere that is, that works on all levels, that satisfies where we want to be in the industry, where we want to be financially, where we want to be as people, where we want to be setting the stage for kind of the next phase of the industry. And those are huge, huge things that, you know, take a chunk out of and try to attack every single year with not that much time, as opposed to just saying, cool, all we want to do is print t-shirts. <laughs> I mean, that's at the end of it, yes, that's a big part of what we do, but I think we try to just attack, attach a way bigger message to, to something. and whether that's a good route, I don't know, but it's been working for 13 years. But I mean, for like, as anyone who's a screen printer, you guys know, how, guys and gals, how horrible the hours are, but also understand that you love it so much. I, that's how I am. I like, we hop up at like six in the morning, we're texting already with our ideas, and it's, I think the hardest part is being able to take out um, your feelings from actual business and not be like, why are you texting me at six in the morning? It's not to mess with me. It's right. we are pushing, <laughs> we're kicking this can down the road as a team. You're in hell, I'll be in hell too. We're in this together. Uh, I think the hardest part is being able to, under, like when someone comes back with feedback, to not take it personally. Because in the end, you're there to give a product to the customer and they're not like, you're a jerk, you got this wrong. It's Here's what I want. How do we get there? I think it's really exciting to see where the industry is too. And I mean, like, you know, with everybody that all of the sudden now seems to be at a platform that has a bigger voice in the industry and just the community that is here, you know, obviously everybody at Printavo and, you know, has been amazing to, oh, yeah. to be super supportive of us and also give us a voice, whether print hustlers or whatever it is. But, but the fact that we're all getting to a point that is 
that is justified. We've all been here a while. We have success stories, and we're not just, you know, yes, we're kind of the new face that is still trying to trailblaze, but everybody knows what they're talking about. And there's, yeah. you know, we're not just in here kind of just like spinning wheels. Everybody really has some valid experience. And, and I think that everybody is very, very empowered to kind of share that definitely that intel with every the new wave of everybody, as opposed to just saying, oh, we, we did it. We're not going to tell you how right. we did it. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I mean, you guys create a wonderful platform for that and everything else that is, I mean, it's, there's so much education here this yeah. this weekend yeah. alone yeah. for ISS that that's that's really kind of inspiring, I think, for everybody. Well, uh, to end it on like a positive note, what was the big win this year? What was like the coolest thing or your favorite memory or like what was the what was the big thing? I think for me personally, being able to really watch a lot of our internal people step up and also just for us feeling like maybe we are in the right direction, that we have people who are really bought in and they're really kind of part of this bigger message that is out there as opposed to, we get it, it's a job, you know, it's it's a job for us too. But I think being able to really see people like step up and share the responsibility and want to kind of carry that message, be really proud. I mean, two of our, our, our best employees that, you know, we're able and lucky to be able to bring out here at ISS that they, you know, James, like one of our, our main production managers was just, he was so hyped on just being able to come out here and be part of it to represent Robo Creative as a company. And we forget those things that is like, mm -hmm. yeah, we, we do that, we do that all day long. But I think that, that that really kind of resonated with me that it's like, there's somebody here that is, you know, really kind of behind what we're doing. And, uh -huh. and again, hopefully that means that we're doing something positive and trying to stay on those paths. Pick the things that like we're doing well and like amplify them, obviously get rid of the stuff that we're doing poorly. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that, at least from, from my internal and external perspective. I'm with you. I mean, the all the internal processes that we made it through without losing our minds, all the trainings and knowledge bases that we're all taking jobs and breaking down, so training becomes a lot more uh, consistent. All that stuff that is not what you're thinking about when you buy your first speedball kit in your basement. Right. Uh, thinking about HR and how you're going to treat your employees and benefits, and benefits, all, all the fun, stuff. all the fun stuff. But <laughs> it's kind of cool to have, you know, to be in this paperwork world and be like, oh man, I actually have to make paperwork for this thing that we built. So I, I think that's amazing what we put together. Right? Actually, what? Good wait, job. hold on. It was 2019 that Stephen. Printavo got engaged at our facility. Ah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so never mind all of that. Yeah, I was most excited about that. <laughs> the fact that we could share that moment, that was super cool. I mean, you know, they, that's a whole message in, the, in itself. But yeah, I mean, And that was a double win because I got a free dog. Uh, an <laughs> English bulldog walked in my shop during uh, Steven's engagement thing and was laying on the floor and everyone was playing with it. And they're like, your dog's awesome. I'm like, that's not my dog. I still got him. He's a massive bulldog. We named him Jablonski. <laughs> now we just need... Thank you, Steven. When Bruce wants to redo his vows, Bruce, you can come do yep. it at Robo Creative. Step your game up. Right. We're hosting weddings, too. <laughs> in 2020. All right, well, uh, wedding planners, print shop, branding masters, Lucas. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah. Printable, sure, we love you. All right. Thank you. Thank you.